Where's your security? This is getting ridiculous. Where's security? He wasn't showing up to work. He was careering around the city drunk. These were things that, that the public deserved to know about, and these were things that meant that no journalist on that beat could possibly just take their foot off the accelerator. I wrote 1900 stories on Rob Ford because he was City Hall. Every few weeks there was something else going on that was surprising. I don't think he was ever prepared for the rigors of the kind of public scrutiny that not only a mayor would get, but that specifically his kind of mayor would get. One of the major cities of the world has a mayor who's apparently hanging out with drug addicts and consuming crack. That's a story. People are going to cover that. Consorting with criminals, you know, these, those reporters were pursuing very important stories that blew up and that cost him his mayoralty. The city manager and city clerk have informed me that the mayor has submitted a notice of leave. He ran an incredibly disciplined campaign in 2010, and it would be fascinating to sort of know what his uh, chemical situation is, if I can put it that way, then, because he was relentlessly on message. I will put an end to the gravy train when I become mayor on October 25th. Rob Ford dominated the news, uh, just like he dominated the election that brought him to City Hall in 2010. Today I'd like to officially say that I am running for mayor of Toronto. There you go. I was listening to him probably at his first ever radio hit. It was on a Toronto AM uh, station on the, the John Oakley Morning Show where they started to give this weirdo counselor from Etobicoke who said crazy things, they gave him a regular spot. It was once a week. And Rob Ford would skewer anybody and Rob Ford didn't care about making friends on city council. We have excellent counselors down there. The Del Grands, the Stinses, the Minnewongs, the Holidays, the, the Nunziaz. We have a group of real hardworking counselors. But I'm not going to name the names, but there's other counselors that are just, you know, they're just filling a seat. Ford every week would have some new outrage about some city councillor who'd expensed an Easter Bunny costume or whatever they'd expensed. And so it just was great marketing for the radio station and also great marketing for Rob Ford. We were also coming off of like this really toxic uh, garbage strike, right? Like in which everybody was just angry at City Hall. Um, and so he was able to kind of like tap into that same anger. And he tapped into something that has never been seen before. And our colleague Chris Selly here has done great work on this and showing how the Forb phenomena is pretty much a unique thing. It doesn't translate into right wing support per se, right? Because wards where Ford wins huge will vote liberal in a federal or provincial election. His campaign is known for being so like well messaged and managed. I remember going out to Etobicoke and every single lawn had a sign that said, Ford for mayor, respect for taxpayers. I just wanted to get a, like a bit of a, of a, take a litmus test of certain places. And so I went to like a strip mall um, in Scarborough and pretty much everybody I talked to said they were voting for Rob Ford. Cut waste, taxpayers, stand up for the little guy. That was what Rob Ford was at the very beginning. You can't get that tree in your lawn cut down, Call me. Your trash isn't getting picked up. Call me. I don't care what ward you're in. Give me a call. I'll make the call for you. And other councillors resented that, right? Because he was uh, taking constituency calls from people halfway across the city. But that's what it was. It was just nickel and dime stuff, but it, it just lit a fire under people. <laughs> There's some people that do not want me to be mayor of the city. They know the party's going to be over. They know the wasteful spending's going to come to an end when I'm mayor. And they're doing everything in their power to do this. It was pretty clear that he was speaking and connecting with people in a way that the other candidates at that time weren't. He was never about anyone who was higher than middle class, interestingly, despite all the money that his family has. I think he, he loved the micromanaging of his constituents' problems and going out and finding a solution. That made him fairly effective and, and you know, beloved as a city councillor, but it also made him fairly ineffectual as a mayor. It will have been a year before the campaign began uh, with various people in the newsroom. It was late at night and, and he had said something that was somewhat outrageous at a council meeting, I think. And we kind of stood around and somebody said, could you imagine if he ran for mayor? And we all kind of <laughs> had a good laugh. And then that was, we all stopped and looked at each other and thought, he could win. I'd, I'd like, like to thank, thank John Oakley. He loved to be on TV. He loved 
more than anything else, it was a very egotistical thing for him to say, I'm the mayor of Toronto, because even when he was running, when he'd stand up in council and he would say to David Miller, when I'm the mayor of Toronto, you guys are going to be sorry, and everybody would laugh and go, ha, 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 Rob, you're never going to be mayor of Toronto. Then he was the mayor of Toronto. I mean, I think it was pretty, pretty scary for a lot of people that this maniac, in a way, had been elected mayor of Toronto. Judgment and common sense that get most Torontonians through each day doesn't exist in sufficient quantity where it's needed most. To reign in an ego, let off the leash. His first day of office, he came in and he cancelled Transit City. And so very quickly that set the tone for this like combative um, situation. Rob Ford was never politically correct. And when he said that Oriental people work like dogs, I mean, that you just can't say that in polite company. You can't even say it in private. I mean, it's, those, those things are inexcusable. He was also, of course, uh, horrible for gays and lesbians in Toronto. I mean, his refusal, his, his contempt for that community was, it was homophobic and it was really wrong and it was no, there was no place for that in the mayor's office. No, I do not agree with putting up the rainbow flag. We should put our Canadian flag up. I put my Canadian flag up in the window. Maybe he was just being honest about his own prejudices, whereas other people are less honest about it and try to bury it. You know, and I think that un ultimately, I don't think that Rob Ford was a racist guy. I was, I think, as baffled as everyone else. Um, perhaps a little bit smug in my dismissal of uh, what Rob Ford could actually be capable of. You look at his first 18 months, he got, some, he got some stuff done. He actually did land some deliverables. Rob Ford brings in some pretty competent people like Doug Holliday as his, uh, you know, to, to, as deputy mayor. And they sign a deal with all of the city workers, inside workers and outside workers, with, before the, con you know, before the contract expires, everybody gets a raise and nobody walks out on strike. I mean, there were a few significant and powerful successes by Rob Ford. It was when the personal stuff crept up that the political side went completely crazy too. These allegations are ridiculous. It's another uh, story uh, with respect to the Toronto Star going after me. Mayor Ford dug in. He didn't do the, you know, I'm gonna get help for my demons thing. The denials after the crack video originally broke, uh, the way that they were stated was very, they were very carefully worded. Uh, he would always say things like, I don't, I'm not a crack user, or uh, I know I don't smoke crack cocaine, and he never actually uh, did, said that he had never done it before. The like tsunami of stuff that started coming out took on a life of its own. I do not use crack cocaine, nor am I an addict of crack cocaine. Mayor, are you saying the video is a fake? Right. Are you taking these allegations okay, seriously? Guys, watch it. Can't go! Get off my property! Take it off my property! I'm leaving! Hey, thank you! Thank you very much! Get off my property! Thank you! We'd been asking Rob Ford this question for months until finally Jackson from Global News, who was the City Hall correspondent there at the time, blurts out, like, have you ever smoked crack cocaine? And, uh, the answer. You asked me a couple questions, and what were those questions? Do you smoke crack cocaine? Exactly. Yes, I have smoked crack cocaine. When, but sir? no, do I? Am I an addict? No. When have you have I tried it? Um, probably in one of my drunken stupors, probably approximately about a year ago. I answered your question. You asked the question properly, I'll answer it. I have no reason to resign. I'm going to go back and return my phone calls. I'm going to be out doing what the people elected me to do. Olivia Gondak it says that I wanted to eat her pussy, Olivia Gondak. I've never said that in my life to her. I would never do that. I'm happily married. I've got more than enough to eat at home. What? 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 The man was a quote machine. Every single day, there was something. There was, you know, a new bizarre statement that he was making, or there was another, you know, raft of police documents coming out. There was some fairly physical stuff that happened with Rob Ford, like a sense that he was physically dangerous. When he stands up, make sure that mother is dead. I need to turn this make sure he's dead. It left me very upset having read about that phone call where Mark Tuohy is on the phone hearing the mayor of the city of Toronto 
obviously impaired, talking about a gun and shooting his wife, and the wife is screaming, and he hears the kids yelling in the background too. It was hard to read that without having a pretty visceral reaction, even though I had thought by that point I had kind of calloused my heart over. This like scene just developed outside of his office, like that was like ground zero for whatever was going to happen. There are 11 ways to get out of the mayor's office at City Hall that do not involve walking by a single reporter. And Rob Ford always ran the gauntlet of the press. So it was a deliberate tactic by Ford and by his thuggish security people to make him look like a sympathetic character, to make him look like he was being assaulted by the press. He thrived in that scenario where he was still appearing to be like him against something, him against the world, right? Like this like fighter. This, folks, reminds me of when, and I was watching with my brother when Saddam attacked Kuwait. You guys have just attacked Kuwait. And you will never, okay, you will never see something that you have, mark my words, friends, this is going to be out right war in the next election. He'd walk up the steps to the second floor and you'd pass by the, what we became to, to be known as like the fishbowl where Rob Ford's office, where his staff worked. And there would be like a correspondent from CNN doing like a live hit. I mean, you knew it was crazy, but then you reflected on just how crazy it was. Because of the mayor's behavior, I'm explaining to my nine-year-old what crack cocaine is. Like you think you cross something and then you see that there's more and then you just think, wow, how much more? I'm relieved that Rob has faced his problems and has decided to seek professional help. Toronto Mayor Rob Ford really is in rehab. Probably in a drunken stupor. Oops, I made a blooper. I'm a drug abuser and now it's all over the news. Rob Ford, mayor of this fourth largest city in North America. I think we've got footage right now. Let's take a look. There he is, he's running up a hill. He's headed up a hill. He's headed, I think he's running towards a fence. He's Do you Are think you? if you had more gay friends, you would not wear that tie? <laughs> oh, 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 gay man. Oh, that's all you got, huh? <laughs> I think the steak queen video kind of takes the cake. I'm like, hey, leave me alone, man. They got five months for me. And they're trying to tell me, bro. We're counter surveilling the guy, you know what I mean? He's hiding here, I'm hiding here, I'm hiding. Oh, we don't. The diagnosis is a malignant liposarcoma. The doctor came up to me and said, uh, Rob, um, we got a bit of a problem. I said, What's that, doc? He said, Cancer. I said, Really, eh? I said, You know what? Go tell, go tell cancer that I'm gonna put him where I put that guy in the mirror three months ago. I hope he gets the help he needs. I know this will be a difficult time for his family and my thoughts are with him. It's explaining to my kids what a will is. Um, it's terrible. I, I, it's hard. It's 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 emotionally hard to um, you know they hear about things like that. They, obviously, they Google it. You're talking. Stephanie's now ten and Dougie's seven. It's, they know what's going on at ten and seven, and it's heartbreaking at times. They don't know what they know what's going on, and you don't know you know when they say stuff. You know, you know it's gonna you know tuck me in at night. And, you know, He's gonna take care of us. It's it, 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 uh, some nights I just cry myself to sleep. But I, what can you do? You can, there's only so, so many tears that can be shed, and you just gotta move on. I guess the there was good news and bad news. Um, I guess the good news is they they said they, they stopped um, the growth or slowed down the growth of the tumor. Um, I, that's the good news, then the bad news is, but they haven't, 
tumor hasn't got smaller. We learned a lot of lessons about how we want to be seen as a city in the world and uh, what kind of city we want to build. And definitely, uh, I don't think you get the Toronto we have today without a Rob Ford at City Hall in 2010. The way his mayoralty will be remembered is as a low point at which we finally did decide that we have to take ourselves seriously. That, you know, we can't afford this nonsense. Uh, we can't afford to pretend that subways don't cost money. We can't afford to pretend that Toronto doesn't matter. It does matter. I think that most definitely the scandal did overshadow a lot of his career. But I think there's still a lot of people that um, support him regardless. And he will be remembered for being, you know, that guy, no matter how misguided it was, he did try to fight for, you know, the little guy. And he tried to get out there and, and do what he could to, to, to rein in what he saw as problems at City Hall. I always found him to be a very genuine individual in a way that a lot of people at City Hall simply aren't. You always have to wonder if they're positioning themselves to run for MP or MPP or if there's some other and there was none of that with, with Ford. Nobody did more for, ironically, for cyclists than Rob Ford. The Rob Ford mayoralty in, involved the creation of more physically separated bike lanes than any previous mayor in the city of Toronto. And a lot of people forget about that. However, I would say that he was a nightmare for public transit. He tore up the transit plan and the transit plan has never recovered from the sort of rampage of the Ford years. Ford to be remembered as the polarizing figure he, he was, but also really acknowledged for his commitment to being who he is. And I think we live in a time of real value on authenticity and, and really caring about the people you care about and he did that unapologetically his whole life as far as I know and 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 I think it's interesting to remember somebody who was not um, perfect you know and nobody is but we tend to eulogize people um, as only the good only the wonderful side of them and I think it'll be interesting to remember Rob Ford as a complex person he's leaving two kids behind there's two children in that house who aren't going to care that daddy didn't get the Scarborough subway built or that, you know, couldn't outsource garbage east of Young Street or had personal problems. People believed that he cared about what they cared about. Legitimately, Rob Ford did care about the taxpayer. He did care about the little guy. And, you know, it wasn't just a stunt to go to the TCH buildings and stuff like that. He did it because he wanted to make sure that people got banged for their buck when they spent a buck on, on city taxes.